What is the floor is yours. Thank you so much for coming. Okay, thank you. So the topic of my presentation is technologies for interplanetary colonization. Um, so I'm not going to pitch any particular technologies or um, uh, products. So my goal here is just to give an overview of our strategy. So where we plan to invest, where we invest in as a venture capital firm. Um, and yeah, so the smiling face is me. Uh, so we have invested like uh, slightly above 200 millions in uh, three main areas. Uh, it's uh, space tech, it's artificial intelligence and synthetic biology. Uh, three of them are like main pillars uh, on which we are basing our strategy. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit of philosophy, but we will skip it because we're short time so um in our view uh the approach to space colonization consists of three main areas the first one is inhabit nearest space uh the second one is colonize new celestial bodies here we're talking about um closer um uh, not not distant celestial bodies uh, i mean like moon mars uh, and probably some satellites uh, in the uh, solar system uh, and the last part is reinventing human uh, to sustain in space. Um, so to be more resistant to all the impacts which uh, we will face in uh, open space. Um, so the first part, uh, I mean, inhabiting, uh, inhabiting near space in, is uh, consists of, uh, so we, we showed it as a pyramid, uh, which is consists of three uh, like waves of techno technological development. The first one is uh, cargo and passengers, uh, minimization of cost delivery and uh, speed of transportation of this payloads to uh, to the orbit. Uh, the second one is building infrastructure uh, to make kind of a base uh, from where we can uh, start uh, uh, moving further. Uh, so here we mean uh, like inhabitant um, stations, uh, industrial facilities, uh, and uh, on the top of it, of the pyramid, uh, so we see an energy production, because as we know, so uh, now we produce only a few hundreds of kilowatts on the orbit, uh, and it needs to be changed because the uh, level of development of civilization is uh, measured by how much, we, uh, how much energy we produce, how much energy we can consume. Uh, so regarding the first part, uh, so we already made substantial success thanks to SpaceX uh, and um, developing Starship. So the launch cost per kilogram substantially decreased and will decrease even more uh, when Starship will start, uh, uh, will, will, uh, will, will be in use uh, frequently, regularly, and uh, mass production of this ship uh, will take place. Also, uh, several companies work uh, in this place, Relativity, Rocket Lab, um, in one, uh, of course, which presented today. Uh, so uh, the second uh, thing uh, is building an infrastructure. Uh, here, our topic uh, where we invested already is uh, Axiom Space. Uh, that's uh, kind of monopoly. So uh, they uh, planning to use uh, International Space Station uh, as a first step to connect their modules directly to ISS and then start build, building their own station. Uh, and um, as previous speakers said, so uh, there is uh, uh, some problems if you want to use, uh, for example, Western technologies, uh, you, 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 you need to use uh, Western space missions. Uh, and um, uh, so the opposite is uh, uh, fair if you want to use uh, so, for example, Chinese technologies, you need to use uh, Chinese missions and uh, uh, do all the researches on Chinese station as well. So uh, Axiom Space is well positioned here. So uh, they have contracts with uh, 13 space uh, agencies, from different countries. Uh, and uh, so, for example, uh, in total, only 30 countries has their own uh, space uh, programs. So the, the second part is uh, on-orbit refueling. Uh, so here's an example of orbit fab. Uh, small satellite launchers, uh, again, regular up artificial gravity. Um, that's more distant thing, but uh, still we will need to find a way how, how to do it in the right way. Uh, space tourism uh, should not be underestimated because uh, 
make everyone familiar with uh, what is space, how to get there, uh, is the clear path to uh, to have more engineers who will be interested in uh, space. Uh, yeah, and then uh, subsequently we will have uh, more progress in this industry. And uh, 3D, 3D printing uh, in space, uh, so here is also some examples. Those are main uh, pillars on which we uh, we, we uh, believe uh, we can build an infrastructure uh, on the orbit. Uh, and the third one, uh, energy, uh, which uh, we plan to start developing quickly from 2025 till 2040. Um, here uh, we're talking about uh, nuclear energy and solar thermal high power generation as a main sources of uh, energy production and uh, as a source of uh, energy for um, different types of, let's say, movers. Uh, solar sail propulsion and uh, electric propulsion. By the way, uh, solar uh, thermal high power generation um, is already has like everything uh, needed in terms of technologies uh, to make this happen. So for example, uh, Rovial, what are they doing? Uh, they're building a system which consists of a big mirror um, and um, like a closed energy circuit, uh, which divided by turbine and uh, wave. And when this mirror hits one part of this uh, circuit, uh, so the gas starts moving through the turbine and uh, producing energy. In the other part, so it's cooling down uh, and uh, coming back through wave uh, into uh, the camera where it's hit it again. So like pretty genius thing. Um, the second part is uh, colonizing new celestial bodies. So here are three main pillars. So systems of living, life support systems, and resource utilization. So. Um, unexpectedly, for this, we have almost everything in place in terms of technologies to build it and to sustain life uh, on uh, distant celestial bodies. We just need to um, start produce energy and to uh, have enough capabilities, enough uh, starships to um, move people there. Um, yeah, so here's technology examples. Um, it's uh, habit construction, energy gen generation. Uh, the important part is radiation protection, uh, which can be achieved um, so in several ways. We will talk about it a little bit later. Uh, food production, psychological support, life support systems. Um, and the last one is waste recycling, minerals extraction, and uh, so, so um, taking resources from beneath the surface. Um, yeah, and uh, the last third part, uh, which is like uh, more think uh, inspiring. So in the space colonization and outer space colonization, here we believe uh, there is some kind of balance. So for inner space colonization, it makes uh, sense to put more efforts in making uh, human biology more resistant to all the impacts uh, in uh, open space. Uh, and for outer space colonization, so here we need to give a definition what we think uh, uh, colonization is, right? So uh, just to move uh, our uh, biological um, bodies to distant uh, destinations in the space or to move our culture and our uh, like uh, way of looking at the universe with uh, for example our artificial twins um, yeah and uh, here's the brief uh, overview of what technologies we're investing in in this uh, sense so for inner space, it's, uh, like I said, enhanced radiation protection, uh, genetic engineering, uh, mostly microbiome manipulation and static organisms. Uh, for outer space, uh, on our investment map is uh, brain-computer interfaces. Uh, the brightest uh, example is Neuralink. Uh, and of course, we will need uh, substantial enhancement in uh, generative, uh, in general, artificial intelligence uh, to be able to send it to uh, distant destinations in space. Uh, and also convergence with robots. Uh, that's why we invest in right now in One X. So that's probably um, pretty much unique startup. Um, so they're building robots uh, driven by artificial intelligence, of course, uh, and uh, like really efficient in terms of uh, energy consumption. Um, yeah, and the last uh, slide is our investment map. So where we already invested. So by the way, we are. Uh, partially exiting SpaceX now, because uh, um, in our opinion, so there is still a lot uh, to be proved by this company. But uh, at the same time, um, 
So their valuation is not justified by their revenues at the moment, but it will. Um, yeah. So uh, in terms of adoption, we invested in Q control. So that's a quantum sensing uh, pro producer. Uh, uh, and uh, also planetarians, which are literally turning waste to food. Uh, and probably the most interesting uh, investment of ours is cache DNA. Those guys are literally making kind of shells for DNA sequences uh, to protect it from uh, different influences, uh, not only in space. So, for example, if you know, uh, so DNA could be preserved only in super low temperatures, not like super low, but low temperatures. With cache DNA products, it could be preserved. So, um, at high temperatures, at room temperatures, well, literally in any temperatures. So yeah, that's it. That's our overview. Hope I um, did it in time and it was interesting. So thank you. Thank you so yeah, much. Five thank seconds you. left. So you are in time. Yeah, usual. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice presentation.